Okay, let's take a look at Shannon's channel coding theorem. Suppose we have a binary source, which consists of a digital source, a source encoder, and so the combination is a binary source, which outputs RB binary digits per second, which then enter a channel encoder so that RC code digits per second exit, which then go through a, a discrete memoryless channel, which has a channel capacity of CS in bits per symbol. And RS here is symbols per second, RB is binary digits per second, and this is the source entropy. And Shannon's channel coding theorem is basically that the source information rate, okay, RS multiplied by H of X, if the source information rate is less than the rate at which information can be transferred across here, I have RC uh, symbols per second coming through here, I've got CS bits per symbol, so the channel capacity or the maximum rate at which information can go through here is RCCS. As long as the source information rate is less than the channel capacity, then what Shannon proved is that there is a channel encoder and a channel decoder on the other side, which can achieve virtually error-free communication over this communication system. You can make the probability of an error at your sink to be as low as you wish. And if this is not true, if big R is greater than this channel capacity, then information cannot be transferred across the channel error-free. Now, if we recall the Shannon's source coding theorem, we know that RB must be greater than or equal to the rate at which information comes out of here, okay? And if I could represent that on the scale here of bits per second, we know that, okay, we know that RB must be greater than or equal to the rate at which information comes out of here. But we also know that the information rate must be less than or equal to the channel capacity. In other words, what we've suddenly realized is that the maximum value of RB, okay, RB max, the maximum rate at which binary digits can be transferred over the system is equal to RC. CS. And um, just to note that RB divided by RC is the code rate. Okay, let's take a look at the information rate at this point. Well, the information rate is given by this in bits per second. At this point here, if P is the probability of a zero, then we know that the average information per binary digit is omega P, and therefore the information rate coming out at this point is RB omega p and the two must be equal okay the source encoder does not destroy information so the rate at which information comes out of the digital source is the same as the rate at which information comes out of the source encoder now this is something we've looked at before and you'll soon understand why i'm doing this so from here i can say well big r divided by rb is equal to omega p which must be less than or equal to one if you go back to the curve of um, omega p and little p you know it's less than one so from here i've got r must be less than or equal to rb or equivalently i've come back to what we knew before that rb must be greater than or equal to r so why did i do all of this well here i can now simply write rb omega p is less than or equal to rc cs okay these two are the same as shown here so now I'm looking at the information rate coming out of the binary source, and we know that the rate at which information comes out must be less than or equal to the channel capacity. The implications of that equation are enormous, and let's see why. Well, from there I've got RB divided by RC, omega P, must be less than or equal to CS, and you recognize, um, you recognize that as our code from here. So what we have is that our code omega p must be less than or equal to cs. And um, if we can make little p go to 0 0.5, right, that's not, that's not difficult using a, an efficient source encoder. Then this quantity here will, this, will become one. 
and we have a very interesting implication of Shannon's channel coding theorem. And what this really is saying is that there is a code out there and a corresponding decoder whose code rate need only be less than CS to achieve error-free communication. And the key point being is that this is possible, right? We need not have our code very much less than CS in order to achieve error-free communication. We need only have our code smaller than or equal to CS. Now, at first glance, that, not, that might not seem um, very amazing, but in fact is responsible for 50 years of research in error control coding. And the best way to understand that is by example.